as I said, it ended up being slighted. And then, a little bit later, somebody tried to dicky it up again, which you can clearly see from the inside. As we come around here, you see this much later um, gateway, doorway rather, and you can see red brick and all sorts of jolly dickying up with red brick arches and in here there's some red brick walls because the grandfather of uh, Parnell, uh, another Parnell who's speaker in the Irish Parliament, did this up as a great hall. So having been knocked down and slighted as I said, and here we can see the slighting quite clearly, um, undermined and destroyed. Um, I have heard that it was destroyed by gunfire from the hill over there. Um, but it, uh, it had a new life as, a, as a, a late 18th, early 19th century hall. Not sure how long for, but you can see it's been a, made a pastiche of a medieval hall with all the bits and pieces that the person who put together the pastiche thought it should have, including a lovely Tudor-esque um, stone archway into it. I don't know whether the original entranceway would have been here, but I don't think it would have looked anything like this. So, after that, it eventually fell into rack and ruin again. So it's been many different things. It's gone through many different phases. A bit like the Church of Ireland that was an early Christian pre-Norman church. It had its Norman phase, other phases, and then, well, most of what we can see is the sort of Victorian or that era, that 19th century edifice, which Everybody looks at and thinks, well, that's always the way it looked. Well, no, it wasn't. And there's many other things before. And this sort of 19th century phase is just another one of the many phases. And well, each of those phases, they had their weaknesses and weren't... Each of them wasn't quite what it wanted to be. But underneath it all still lies the fact that it is here. It is here overlooking the Midlands. A great piece of high ground looking out across the landscape of society. In many ways, that's what the Church of Ireland is. Often ruined battered and fallen apart. But having thought about all those people for whom this structure seemed to fail, I look at it now and think, do you know what? As a defensive post, this place was hopeless. It kept on being knocked over. It didn't defend any of the people or any of their points of view that they thought it would. Maybe our church is a little bit the same. Maybe we look at our church now and think it is ruinous compared to what it once was. But do you know what? It still gives us a great moral outlook, just as this heap here gives us a great picturesque view. Maybe, as a defensive structure, this is hopeless. And maybe, as a defensive structure, our church isn't quite what it should be. But maybe it doesn't have to be. Maybe that's not what the church is for. Maybe that's not what this heap of stones is here for. 
maybe this heap of stones is here to be a place of history, of recreation, of curiosity, and of visitation. A place where people can come, refresh themselves, and see wonder. And I think that's what our churches should also be. A place where we can go, be refreshed, see wonder, see something of the input and footprint of history, as we can clearly see here, but also to remember what that history is built upon. Because all of this structure here is only the stuff that people have done on what lies underneath. What lies underneath is the massive lump of rock that gives this place, the Rock of Dunamace, its name. And just like that, underneath all we do as a church should be the Rock of Ages, the Rock that is our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And unless whatever we're doing is thoroughly founded on that, well, whatever we're doing, we may as well be building sandcastles. Because the only difference between a sandcastle on the beach and this one is the amount of time it lasted. But compared to eternity, 500 years or 500 seconds doesn't make much of a difference. And looking at this, I think to be a thing and a place of wonder and of reflection, that's the best we can aim for. And I think wonder and reflection is why I built some castles, because I still do. Stone arches. One of the reasons why is not going to the beach with you in the winter. But there you have it. So I hope the Church of Ireland will be a place of wonder, reflection, and even though it may be a ruin compared to the glory of a Victorian age or even a medieval edifice, that doesn't matter because a lot more people get a lot more successful use out of this monument as a monument and as a ruin than ever managed to successfully use it as a place of